Hi, it's Tom and it's 2024. Almost all the code I write is written right there in that room. Basement office. Here's the office. As you can see, I get a fair amount of light. I'm never really sure if I should face my desk to the window or keep it against the wall. This is the last room in our house that we're ever gonna renovate, so I get to enjoy the wood panel ceiling and popcorn walls. My chair is, I believe, the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, and the desk we actually got for free on Kijiji, which is like Craigslist up here in Canada. I'm using a Logitech webcam, which I want to upgrade at some point for better video quality, but I don't think I want to go full DSLR. If you have a recommendation for something that's plug and play, uh, but gives better video quality than what I'm using right now, love to hear it. I'm recording this on my Blue Yeti, which is fine. After five years on Linux, I'm back on a Mac. I didn't initially expect this to happen, but at work they moved us all over to Macs, and I found that I could get most of the Linux stuff I liked on Mac uh, while having some of the nice benefits of a Mac. Mac OS has actually been pretty great. It's, uh, it's fast. Uh, my MacBook is quiet. Software, like I said, is better in general. But it's really the little things for me, like closing my laptop, knowing it's going to sleep, opening it up five hours later. I think you can get all that working on Linux. I just have a lot less time these days. But I use my Mac a lot like I use Linux. I'm either in my browser or I'm in my terminal. I think those are pretty much the only applications that I spend a lot of time in. When I first moved over to Mac, I tried to make everything as Linuxy as possible, including using Yabai, which is a tiling window manager for Mac. But uh, Mac OS uh, is not designed to be tiled, and I found I was often fighting with Yabai uh, more than actually finding it beneficial. I also stopped using multiple, I'm not sure what you want to call them, screens, active workspaces, desktops, whatever. I only use a single desktop now, and uh, I actually find this a lot better. So whereas previously on desktop 3, I would have my terminal, on desktop 2, I would have my browser, something like that. Uh, now it's just all in one place. But it doesn't mean I don't tile. Like I, I still tile, I just don't have it done automatically for me. So uh, here's Yabai in Chrome, right? And then I can throw this over to the left. Let's open up a terminal and then put that on the right. So I'm still working, uh, you know, tiling adjacent, but uh, it's not an auto tiler and it's not my whole operating system. If I ever decide I don't want tiling, then great, let's just put this thing full screen and or, or like this or whatever. But you can see these, these are just kind of all over the place. I do all my window management with probably my favorite application, which is called Raycast. So Raycast, if you're coming from a Linux world, you can imagine Raycast being Rofi, sort of D menu, but 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 it's a lot more and it's a lot better integrated because Raycast knows that you're going to be on Mac OS. They don't have to worry about like which version of uh, desktop environment or any of that that you're running on Linux. They know what programs are going to be there, so uh, so it works pretty nicely. So I can move my window around like this. I can make it. Uh, pretty like this for a screencast or or like this like I would normally do um, right so I can throw this one over here and put that one like that then I can open up a new terminal and put this like here so uh, I love the window management of Raycast I, I think it's pretty great but Raycast does so many other things like if I want to change my Bluetooth I'm going to click in Bluetooth and there we go same thing VPN it'll show up right here it has an emoji picker which I use a, a surprising amount I can do math uh, which I always forget to do but I know that I could do that there's just so many different things that it can do and so many plugins and it can integrate with a lot of different stuff. And again, you can, you can get this working on Linux, but there was nothing that worked as well out of the box and I'd always have to kind of configure things myself. Maybe my favorite part of Raycast is that it has clipboard history. So if I type in clipboard history, I can go in and view all my clipboard history. And it also handles uh, media as well. So like images. One piece of software I am paying for on a Mac is uh, CleanShot X. Uh, don't love the name, but I do love the product. It's just incredible. Like uh, on when I was on Linux, I, I'd, I'd often use what Flameshot, and then there's this other one that I was using for a while. Those those tools are about like let's say 10% as good as this tool is. So it can do video recording, it can do images, you can mock things up, you can make it, uh, your screenshots look amazing, you can capture an entire web page. It's just um, it's one of the weird things about being on a Mac where Mac users will actually pay for software, so people will actually build software for Macs. Um, you know, like something like this, I just don't think can exist on Linux because it would be so complicated to build. And at the end of the day, somebody needs to get paid for it. I'm using Carabiner Elements, uh, 
just for two things. So for quickly opening up a terminal. And then uh, the other thing that I use it for is making my caps lock be my control key. So if I hold down caps lock, it's control. If I tap caps lock, it's actually escape. And I find that very useful in BIM. Okay, so I said I spend a lot of time in terminals. Let's talk a little bit about terminals. So here is my terminal. And uh, I think it's very pretty. I'm very happy with my terminal, nice and simple. Uh, this is WESTERM. So I really like WESTERM. Um, I've tried pretty much every terminal out there. Uh, and Westerm is the one that has kept me coming back. Westerm just works very nicely out of the box. I like that it auto reloads my configuration. I like that emojis, uh, Unicode, like that that type of thing works very well, italics. Uh, so I've, I've been extremely happy with it. My Westerm config is not very complicated. Uh, I'm using the Mono Lisa Nerd font, which I think is very nice, very easy for me to read. And then uh, the color scheme I'm using is Night Owl, uh, which is this sort of dark blue. I, I go back and forth between a very black and a dark blue color scheme. And I think I generally prefer dark blue only because it reflects less. So uh, I, I just don't like when my computer screen turns into a mirror. These days, the shell I'm using is actually fish. Uh, and I think fish is pretty good. So I tried out fish when I was first learning uh, how to use a terminal. I thought this is really great. And then it was just too confusing for me. I'm now back on it. So I, I wouldn't do any actual scripting in fish. That will all be done using bash. Fish is very easy to set up um, and I just like, you know, syntax highlighting. I think that that's pretty cool. Um, and then installing plugins, like I say, is very, very simple. I haven't modified it too much except for that I have this thing. So uh, if I type in cat, like that's a real program, but cat is not. And then if I type this in, it it uh, it makes fun of me. And that's just done uh, using these two functions here. It's uh, very straightforward. The prompt I'm using is called Starship. Uh, I used to be somebody who would customize my own prompt. That was a lot of fun to do for a while. Starship is just so much better. They they think about a little bit of everything for me. So like if I go into a Go directory, uh, I get a little gopher here. I assume that's what that is. And uh, you know, it'll tell me things about my Git status. Yeah, yeah this is Go version 1.2, right? Um, so, and then like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm on the branch main. Like it, it just sort of does all those things for you. And it does a lot of it asynchronously, which I don't know how that works. Uh, but it is really awesome, right? So much better than I would do myself and uh, very well supported by the community. Works obviously on, on Linux as well. Since you've stuck around this far in the video, I'll show you something cool in Raycast. You can uh, you can do confetti. That's pretty fun, right? Confetti in Raycast, right? So if I type confetti, I actually have the setup uh, option C so I can do this anytime I want. It's pretty useful, right? Pretty good. Still using NeoVim for my editor. Uh, I've, I've tried a few different things. Um, I've tried getting on VS Code, just couldn't do it. Uh, I'm looking at Zed. Zed seems interesting, but NeoVim has really uh, been quite good and, and comfortable and fast and just pretty happy with it. I used to do all my configuration from scratch. Uh, now I'm using LazyVim uh, as sort of like the, hmm, what is it? Distribution, I guess is what they call it. I just find it, it, it sets up a lot of things out of the box very nicely for me and makes it easy for me to change those things because there are a lot of things that I want to change and disable but I really like LazyVim. My usage of uh, NeoVim is probably fairly automatic. Uh, if I do, you know, GR, I get all the references to this thing. You know, I can jump to definition. Um, I've got trouble set up so that I can see all the issues uh, in my code. I don't use a file tree. And um, in fact, I've now gotten, officially gotten rid of all file tree plugins. The closest thing I have is mini files which is sort of like oil and Vim, but it's uh, it's this thing, right? So it's a, it's a buffer, uh, which I can open up and edit like any other buffer. So I could add a new file here called wow.go. And then I uh, now have a new file called wow.go. So I think that's, that's pretty good, right? And then I can delete it just like I would uh, using Vim and now it's gone. Uh, well, that's gonna cause an issue. You can't delete the, anyway, you know, you know what happened. Most of the coding I do these days is in um, TypeScript for our front end applications at work or PHP for back end applications or anything I'm doing on the side is generally in Go because that's a language that I find interesting and uh, I find it a joy to use. I've been working through NAND to Tetris uh, slowly throughout the year. NAND to Tetris is a very cool free program where they teach you how computers work. 
uh, for somebody without a comp sci degree, this this has been pretty useful. So you start off with, uh, you know, gates, and then you start putting these and gate and not gate and and gate together, and you get a little bit more complicated systems. Eventually, you have like a a CPU, and then you start writing machine code, and then you write assembly, which converts to machine code. Then you start writing a VM, which converts to assembly. And now I'm at the stage where I'm writing a compiler, which will convert to VM code, which uh, you just you just learn a lot of stuff that you're not gonna learn um, building websites in PHP. I also updated my personal web page again recently using Hugo, and I'm enjoying that. Um, it's pretty simple, but uh, I have a lot of fun just uh, coding HTML, CSS, trying to learn the new CSS, trying to make sure I am up to date with all the things that have changed since I started learning to program. But yeah, how do I program in 2024? You know, I'm in the terminal. I love it. It's a nice place to be. See you later.